Today I'm doing a video on a guide to getting started for new players on Idle Heroes PS. This is Ibex. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. So this is just going to be more of a general S1 guide, a guide to S1, uh, as well as talking about some of the, the heroes I recommend building and talking about transitioning from PvE to PvP at some point. So I've already completed my uh, my dailies for S1 today, and I, I think this is the biggest thing, you know, just make sure you're doing everything you can do every day. Um, hit all the buttons, uh, make sure you enter into free team up arena or trial of champion. I actually haven't entered that in uh, this week yet, so I'll go ahead and do that. Just placing in the top 200 gives you quite a bit of resources each week. If I was placed in the top 200, that means I get three orbs. Um, and it's not too hard to place higher. Uh, I think 51 to 100 is absolutely within the realm of possibilities once you've built up your team a little bit. So um, pushing that, pushing free team up arena each week, very good habits to do. Um, Iron Man Arena, uh, it's an endurance game. Let me make sure I get my team set right. I always like to make sure my Starlight fires before my field. And I like to put my Gherky right there. That's good enough. Oh, and I, I'm using Fox Pet right now. It's been pretty good to me. So you start off, let me exit and re-enter. Does it say what my rank is? It doesn't even say. Now, if I do one battle, let's see what that shifts to. I just want to get a sense of if you only are able to win one battle, how much can, how high can you get? So I've only won one battle. I'm in the top 200, um, and so that's a pretty decent amount of. Um, I think it's just five. I think it's five. five. It's not. It's not a huge amount. Maybe. Uh, maybe do it after a month or two. Once you have enough tickets to spare, the way it works, you only have three opponents. I can't refresh. That's just it. So you pick between the three. And right now I'm just looking at power and just hitting the, the low power one. Will I beat this guy? No, I wasn't thinking. I should have looked at the other one. It still says 144. If I exit and re-enter, it'll tell me what I'm actually ranked. Oh! Just short of top 50. So I'm not getting a huge amount of scrolls. What is that? Uh, eight. I'm getting eight scrolls, probably. If no one else, if not a lot of people surpass me. But I think I could do quite a bit better in there. Uh, my, my, my arena team is generally top 50 right now. I'm, I'm 29. And, you know, you start to learn the teams that you can beat and the teams you can't beat. Like, I don't do so well against... Um, uh, against these uh, Horus teams right now. But I'm, I'm getting way off topic. This is supposed to be an S1 guide. And you know, I'm just playing the game and get, having fun. Um, but yeah. oh, I did win that. Oh, maybe, so maybe I can beat these, uh, these guys. I kinda wanna watch it. Hopefully you guys don't mind. I wanna rewatch this battle because I wanna see what happens. Um, I put, you know, Fox Pet is very good against Horus teams because it gives your whole team precision. I don't think I've got any of my guys equipped with Light Will, which is definitely hurting me against this team. Um, but uh, it looks like I'm just not letting them get off. I'm just not letting them get any attacks off. So that's what's allowed me to win this one. Because um, their basic attack does a lot of damage. And then, of course, I've got Fox Pet built in, so I'm not taking uh, damage from uh, Horse passives when I hit them. But yeah, uh, so getting, get, getting a little off topic. So you do all the things, you do all the quests, you watch my tavern video, my or my marketplace video, which I talk about how I do my tavern resources. So let's just say that that's all covered. There'll be a point, there will be a point where you don't wanna buy the um, basic scrolls because there'll be a point where gold is uh, tricky, like right as you're starting to build your first E3 hero. I recommend backing off on buying the, the um, basic scrolls for gold. And then once you reach like, once you get into like the mid 200s, your level, I see I'm 284. Once you get into the mid 200s, you can start buying 
uh, those uh, basic scrolls again, but you'll find that there's a point where gold becomes really hard to come by. But you know, watch my broken spaces video. You get a lot of gold there. Your guild choice. The guild, I don't like the way, I don't like where we're at with guilds. If you're a new player just joining S1, just starting the game, you can either join an old guild that started at, when the game started, and like mine, like the guild I'm in right now, and this is what you'll be looking at if you join uh, an old guild. All the guild bosses have been finished, so we beat all 60 guild bosses, and that's where you're going to get the majority of your guild coins. Oh look, I was the, the big hitter on this last guild boss. Um, if you want to get guild coins fast, you're going to want to join a new guild. The problem with joining a new guild is that you need to somehow round up a bunch of good players who can attack the guild bosses and take them down quickly with you. Um, and that can be difficult. Um, it's, I mean, it's, uh, I would suggest you go to World Chat and you join a guild that's uh, low level, like this level one Pinoy, this level seven House of Light, level 23 Grind, oh no, not the level 23 Grind High. That's not, that's what you don't want to join. That's a guild like mine. Um, if, you're, if you join a low level guild and they're on guild boss four, you might leave. And here's my rationale. They're still very, they're like way too young. You kind of want to get a, 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 into a guild that's on like guild boss. Like let's, yeah, let's say eight. Eight is the lowest you'd want to do. And really 24, you could go higher. It's, if, you, if you go higher, it's fine. But I'd say eight to 24. Once you've been in a guild that's killed, like say 10 guild bosses, that's enough guild tech to get you started. And you could leave and join another one, or you could leave and join an established guild, and then some at some point um, go back and do the rest of the guild bosses. You can type, you can go to world chat and then type dot s like that. See what I'm typing dot s, and it stands for show guild bosses that you haven't beaten. You hit that in there. Now I've oh, I can still get reward for the one and two guild boss. Now it's not worth it for me to do that, but. If you had a lot of guild bosses that you could receive rewards for, it would be worth uh, uh, either, you know, once you've really built up your team, going back through, starting at guild boss one and just getting the rest of the ones you didn't hit. Um, but um, that's, that's basically my take on like what to do as far as joining a guild. If you do join an old guild like mine and you do pray for fire, uh, it's like, you're gonna be getting like 8,000 guild coins every like week or so at best, but really realistically every two weeks you get 8,000 guild coins. Whereas if you join a guild that beats a boss every day, you're gonna get like uh, a million guild coins in a couple weeks. So that's, that's my take. Um, eventually, no matter what, you're gonna have like an overflow of guild coins. Um, oh look, I haven't maxed my warrior deck, but that's kind of by design because I don't really need, I don't have a warrior that does damage right now. Uh, my mage is all my damage. Go ahead and max the crit, I guess. Um, well, the only reason you wouldn't max crit is so that your mages aren't giving the enemy energy. That's something I do. But again, I'm getting into the weeds. All right, so, so that's my take on guilds. I've talked... I talked about market and tavern. Go watch my market video. It goes over tavern and market resources. Uh, I don't think I covered, let's just cover some of the different places. So Wishing Fountain, that's where you're gonna get a lot of gold. The copy doesn't make too big of a difference. That you know, going for that pre premium hero copy. Instead, focus on gold. And so let's go to, here, I'll show you how I, I do my gold. Um, because it's a multiplier of three. Like right now, if I refreshed it, um, it's going to be either like 200, 200,000, 400,000, or 600,000. And I, I high rolled 600,000 when I refreshed. And so I'm going I'm to keep it on this because that's what I want. Um, and to know what the high roll is for you, it's based on your level. So if I go to Discord, go to, 
go to the private server Discord and then go to command chat and then type in .lvl space your level, like the level you are right here up at the top left. I'm 284, so if I type .lvl space 284, it'll show me the, the max roll on, I think it's on seasonal, and so it'll show me the max roll. Uh, S1 amounts are half of what seasonal are. So you'll see that, yeah, that is the top amount that I could get right now on that. It's also a very high roll for, if not the top, for my, my soul, my uh, soul, which is another resource that is uh, a little lacking um, on S1. So that's, that's what my, my recommendation for um, Wishing well. Similarly, on Super Wishing Well, uh, 5K is the high for everyone, regardless of your level. Five, five million is the high. 45, 4.5 million is the middle, and four million is the low. 1,200 is the top for your Monster Soul. 1,000 is the middle, and 800 is the low. Um, it's always two orbs. It's always 300 branches. Uh, the hero copy. Uh, I've gotten on a light dark hero which is nice that's I think it's one in ten rolls end up with a light dark hero this is either 120 dark or 120 light uh, uh, shards the orange artifact this one's always a red 50 but the orange artifact sometimes it's a skin and sometimes it's a orange exclusive artifact um, I'm gonna do a 10 roll I normally recommend doing a one roll so that you can get you can just do roll one, get your orange exclusive shard, and then refresh. But I'm in a little hurry, so I'm just gonna do 10 rolls. And now the guru, who cares? Um, do another 10 roll. I was hoping I could show you real quick. The thing you don't want is skins. So there's a skin shard. There, there's no value to skins. They are completely cosmetic on Idle Heroes private server. So I skip that when I refresh and I refresh again because I really only want these orange exclusive shards. So that's my, that's my strategy for um, super wishing well. Um, uh, event raid, I'm going to go over it. It's, event raid is huge. Uh, I've already done my dailies for this, but you can see I bought six extra um, um, Roll, uh, six extra battles for the for this uh, for the shards challenge, um, which I don't recommend buying it for the spirit or the gold. But I do once you once you can smash this one. I think it's like a level one ten or something. Absolutely buy the those extra rolls. The the uh, the the shards that you get from doing this each day equal out to being like a nine star hero so now I, i'm i'm level one, 160 is when you unlock this bottom one and um it's it's a it's a great deal but it's even a good deal um at lower i think it lo unlocks at 130 for this one once you hit this one absolutely always buy it once you hit i think 110 for this one it's kind of worth it but it, i mean it's absolutely worth um at these higher levels um you get you, you will get an entire be able to build an extra nine star hero each month, which is very big. Now, heroes, uh, this is the question everybody wants to know. What hero should I build? If you, if you want to build one hero first, all the way to E3, I would say for PVE, there's nothing better than going with Penny. And that's for three reasons. One, she does okay in tower. With Penny, you can easily get to 400 in tower, which is a good start. Uh, in Aspen Dungeon, uh, she is the top hero. So using Penny will get you to hell quite easily. And um, actually, I should go ahead and throw my heroes in and just, uh, I've already swapped heroes out, so I'm no longer using Penny. But <clears throat> the reason you want to get up high is look at all these resources I get from every four days for Aspen Dungeon. Now it's not huge, but it's nothing to scoff at either. A little bit of gems, a chunk of gold, um, some shards. Every and th and then beyond that, you also get to make uh, you get these good purchases in the stores. So I always buy. Um, at the very least, I. Um, it depends on gold. So I if at the beginning, I, the only thing I recommend at the beginning buying for sure 
is always these wishing coins for gold. So I buy them all. Um, and then the, 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 the middle lady, the senior tavern lady or whatever she's called, I also buy them from her. Um, and it looks like she didn't give me any this time. Um, and the reason is because like we looked at earlier, the wishing well, uh, it's very easy. It's, it's it basically free gold um, at a certain point when you spin that spin that wheel because you usually get like four or five um, of these. So that's, you know, right there. That is, uh, I'm not good at math, so bear with me. Six times four, is that two million gold? A little over two million gold right there from one spin. So it's absolutely worth it to buy from these merchants in Aspen Dungeon, wrong button again, um, the, the wishing coins for gold. Now, anything else? I mean, I, as a new player, I wouldn't buy these um, arena tickets um, or don't buy more than you can't afford, you know, but I'm late game, so I'm going to do it. Um, uh, so that's, that's the thing with Aspen. Now, how to build your, uh, penny for Aspen. Uh, you'll want to buy this artifact right here. This is the dildo or the, the punisher of immortal. Uh, I don't think I've got it equipped on anyone. I'm just going to open a random hero and show you, you would want this artifact. Um, and then I would say split her gear. So let me go to my ranger. Split gear means that, oh, this is not a ranger, my ranger. So pretend this is Penny. Split gear, the way you do it is you uh, replace these with the six star, the six star flame necklace. Keep the minstrel bow and then replace these two. Now, why would you do this? The reason, so this is basically my ideal layout for Penny. And actually, I'll go ahead and convert it to the stone that you'd want. Not attack, you don't want attack stone for Penny. You want the crit damage, this one right here. Crit, crit, these, these. Uh, you, want, you want to be sure that it's crit, crit. And not the crit HP, you don't want this one. This is crit HP, this is no good for Penny. I mean, it's fine, but it's not what you want. You want the, the crit uh, crit attack um, for Penny. I'm gonna go all the way through the loop. One of the cool things about PS is that, one, this is free at the top level to convert, and two, uh, it goes in a perfect cycle. So I don't have to like, there's no RNG with converting stones, which is a huge pleasure. So this is, this, this is what you'd want for Penny, this crit damage stone. Um, and you would want it, you do want to max it out. Um, and then you want the Punisher on her, and then you want this, this layout. So um, the reason it works, let's look at her, his attack right now. So his attack is 14 points, uh, 146,000, right? Uh, his HP is 216. So let's just take note. If I go ahead and just max it out, his attack is actually lower. It just dropped down 8,000 points to 137. Um, and his HP has gone up a little bit. Um, so it gives you a mild boost in attack. And you kind of have to pick. So I, I usually go with one, this one because it gives me the extra crit. And then this one gives me an extra skill damage. You could do it the other way around. So I could leave that one. I get the extra crit damage. This one will actually do a little bit more damage, I think, with Penny, but uh, I like to have the super high crit chance. It's kind of either or. So this is one way to split it for Penny, or we can split it this way. Oops. Either of these two are valid ways to go for it. The other nice thing about doing split gear is that it's cheaper. You don't have to spend the extra $30 million converting these into the Ranger gear. When you're over in Blacksmith and you're working on building out your penny, you would just build you know, your, your uh, six star flame armor, your six star flame boots, and then you would you'd build your six star flame necklace, build your six star thorny whip, 
right? And then you would only have to buy this one for 10 million, right? You don't have to buy all, you don't have to spend 30 million extra gold. So it saves you a little bit of gold um, in addition to being a little bit higher attack. The only downside for Penny is that her speed is a little lower as far as Aspen Dungeon goes. Um, and once you reach Hell, speed starts to matter. Um, but up until that point, it doesn't. And then the only other tip as far as Aspen Dungeon with your penny, pretend my Gurky's a penny, right? Is that you want her to start off her first battle with full energy. So it's absolutely essential. Oops, I just double tapped it. Don't do that. But it's absolutely essential that you start off your first battle with full energy or you're going to lose. Um, and that's because we look at her ability real quick and we see that Penny's active requires a lot of energy to use. So if you don't start off with full energy, you're going to probably die because it's going to take her a couple rounds to get, get up to the top. Her skill requires 150 energy to use. Most heroes just require 100. So she needs that extra, extra 50. So, so that's my, that's my, um, my advice for building Penny. Um, once you build Penny and once you get to Aspen Dungeon Hell right here, see I'm in Hell. Once you get to Hell, you don't really need Penny anymore. Um, and you will have gotten to uh, ideally like level 400 in Tower. And at that point, you can use your Soul Stones to convert Penny, which is what I did. I, I converted my Penny uh, up in this dialogue right here. Cool Events, 10 Star Replacement. It's not actually 10 Star, it's, it's E3 Replacement. Or it's any, yeah, it's, it's 10 Star and above. So what I did is I took my Penny Let's pretend field is Penny right now. Um, and I convert, you can convert her into another hero if you've got the copies. So um, I need, I would need seven copies of another hero. And you could convert her into Ithaqua or some other hero. Um, she's also, you might want to keep her, you know, I mean, she is decent for uh, a couple other things, but I'm going to say that if we're just trying to like quickly push as fast as possible that once you finish Penny you might want to switch into Ithaqua and push it push as far into tower I think you can get to tower 700 with this tower team and if you watch my tower video I kind of walk through how it works um, it goes without saying switch over to seasonal and then I think you know it's a great place to test out heroes to learn how to build stuff you get so many resources so fast it's, it's just, it's kind of, it's like idle heroes on crack, you know, you get 18 five-star heroes every day, all these resources. Um, but <clears throat> if you don't have time for seasonal, at the very least, I recommend you look at these and you do what you have to do to rank in the, uh, just to, just to, just to place. Like I haven't placed on tower yet. That's because it isn't open yet, but just do the bare minimum to place in each of these categories. And that'll give you these big old rewards at the end. And it's not much, but you know, if I rank at the bottom, that's 362 in this category, and this and then this category. So if you rank in each of the each of the categories, you can easily get, you know, uh, 2,000 gems right there, um, or almost 2,000 gems, and a bunch of other resources. You know, the uh, five star, and these all get delivered to your S1. So it's a, it's a game, the season, think of seasonal as like a game mode that starts over each month that you can use to uh, get more resources for your S1. Um, switch back over to S1 because seasonal is a whole nother ball game that we'll talk about someday. I will definitely be making some videos for how to get started on seasonal uh, next month. What else do you want to know? Profit? Profit or what do you orb in each month? Uh, just depends. I mean, I think it's fine. You know, there's no there's no wrong answer for what to orbit. If you want to make an LD team, if your goal is to make uh, a light dark team, then just orb light dark. Uh, you don't get a huge amount of copies, but every once in a while you'll get lucky and get get something you need. I'm gonna waste some real quick. See if I get lucky. Give me a rare hero. See, it's not it's not. You don't get lots of. It's not a great resource, but then you know there's a faith blade. Top star, top top tier hero. This this uh, currently. Okay, let's talk about events on S1. Um, it's a question a lot of people have. 
how much should I save? Uh, and it's actually really easy on Idle Heroes PS. It's a five week repeating cycle. It goes Heroic Scroll, Casino, Profit, Tavern, Militants, and then it loops back to Heroic. You don't need to save for more than five weeks for any of these events. You can reach, I, you can reach any of these events in three weeks. You can reach the max, well not the super max, the, 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 uh, a lot of these now have avatars at the tip top, but you can reach, complete most of the event and it's worth, if you're already in the event, it's worth using the resources. So right now we're in the profit event. And so if you can hit, hit 25 points, do it. If you can hit 50 points, do it. If you can hit 75 points, go ahead and just do it. There's no reason not to because next cycle you will be able to save easy 200 um, and even maybe 250 without, without, without trying too hard. If you follow my tavern, uh, the video that, where I talked about market and tavern, you can hit all these pretty easily. So uh, don't worry about saving like crazy. Uh, if, you know, like right now we've got the, uh, the tavern event coming up. You don't need to save anything for that. We've got the militants event coming up. You don't need to save anything for that. Um, you can start saving heroic scrolls. Um, I would say go ahead and start saving heroic scrolls right now. Um, but you don't need as much as I do. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I, I, I've just, uh, normally I would say spend them all. Spin, spin, spin. But I'm kind of I'm kind of in end game, so I don't need to go crazy. And I want to see whatever that top tier avatar is for 2,500 heroic scrolls. But you at the beginning, you only need to be saving up that what 600 heroic scrolls or so. Um, and if you have if you have 600 heroic scrolls right now, you could probably spend 200 and easily save back up to to hit 600. So that's my strategy. Is that I just try to save whatever I need to uh, meet those um, uh, those middle tiers, that 600 heroic scrolls, and and not more. You don't need to be saving like crazy. Um, and yeah, I think you know that's you know that's my that's that's the savings guide for you right there. I even talk about it down here at the bottom of this little resource, and you can see right here it's my savings guide. You don't need to be saving like crazy. Uh, what else? What else? I think that's it. Uh, this has been a longer video, and hopefully it's been informative. Um, please do subscribe. Uh, it makes me feel good. And please uh, like the video and leave comments if you've got any questions. And until next time, I will catch you later.